Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. Finland has been ranked as the happiest country in the world for the seventh time in a row. But why? What is happiness, and how is it measured? This episode of Thinking in English discusses the Cantrill Ladder. Why the World Happiness Report might not accurately test happiness, and why Finland keeps coming top of the rankings. I really enjoyed researching this episode, and I hope you all enjoy listening to it. You can find a full transcript for free over on my website, thinkinginenglish.blog. Here is today's vocabulary list. Cantrill ladder. Cantrill ladder, a method used to measure life satisfaction and happiness by asking individuals to rate their lives on a scale from zero to ten. For example, participants in the study were asked to climb the Cantrill ladder to indicate their current level of happiness. Metaphor, metaphor. A figure of speech in which a word or phrase is applied to an object or action to which it is not literally applicable, as in, the Cantrill ladder employs the metaphor of climbing steps to represent different levels of life satisfaction. Ranking, ranking. The action of arranging items or individuals in a particular order based on specific criteria. For example, Finland's high ranking in the World Happiness Report reflects its citizens' overall well-being and satisfaction with life. Subjective, subjective. Based on personal opinions, feelings, or experiences. Rather than objective facts, as in, happiness is often subjective. Wealth, wealth, ownership of valuable possessions or resources, typically in the form of money or assets. For example, although wealth can contribute to happiness, it is not everything. Contentment. Contentment, a state of satisfaction and ease with one's circumstances or situation, as in, feelings of joy, contentment, and satisfaction are part of happiness. Well-being, well-being, the state of being comfortable, healthy, and happy, as in. Regular exercise and a balanced diet are essential for maintaining overall well-being. Let's start this episode with a question. I want you all to concentrate, think about my words, and then answer the question. Please imagine a ladder. With steps numbered from zero at the bottom to ten at the top, the top of the ladder represents the best possible life for you, and the bottom of the ladder represents the worst possible life for you. On which step of the ladder would you say you personally feel you stand at this time? Personally. I think I'm somewhere around a step six. I can think of a few really simple ways my life could be better, but I definitely don't have a bad life at all. Now, how about you? Which step did you choose? This question is known as the Cantrill Ladder, and it is the main question researchers ask to assess life satisfaction and happiness. The World Happiness Report, the subject of today's episode, uses the Cantrill Ladder to rank the happiest countries in the world. They ask at least one hundred thousand people across one hundred and thirty different countries the same question I asked you: to rank your life, 
using a ladder metaphor. The results are then collected and processed, and each year a ranking is released. They also consider six other factors. GDP per capita, social support, life expectancy, freedom, generosity, and freedom of corruption. They take into consideration the Cantrell ladder scores from the previous three years, meaning that the 2024 results are based on data from 2021, 2022, and 2023. And the World Happiness Report is a collaboration between the international polling company Gallup, Oxford's Wellbeing Research Centre and the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network. So, let's take a look at the 2024 results. As you can probably guess from the title of this episode, Finland has been ranked as the happiest country in the world. This is not the first time Finland has been at the top of the World Happiness Report. In fact, it is the seventh time in a row. In the 2024 rankings, Finland was given a score of 7.741 out of 10. If we look at the top 10 happiest countries in the world, you'll notice a strong Northern European presence. Following Finland, and in order, the happiest countries are Denmark, Iceland, Sweden, Israel, the Netherlands, Norway, Luxembourg, Switzerland, and Australia. The only two non-European countries are Israel and Australia, and Scandinavia does especially well, with all Scandinavian countries being ranked in the top 10. Actually, This is the same top 10 as last year, it hasn't changed. There were a few other interesting results. Lithuania, for example, was ranked the 19th happiest country. However, if you just look at the rankings for people under the age of 30, Lithuania was the happiest country in the world. Lithuania's older people, on the other hand, were far less satisfied with their lives. The opposite is true in North America. For people under 30, the USA was ranked as number 62, and Canada was ranked as number 58. For people over 60 years old, the USA was ranked as number 10, and Canada was ranked as number 8. So young people were far less happy with their lives than their parents' generations. At the bottom of the ranking, with the lowest happiness rating, is Afghanistan. Other countries at the bottom include Lebanon, Lesotho, uh, Sierra Leone and Congo. Now I'm sure you're all eager to find out why Finland is constantly ranked as the happiest country in the world and I will get to this in a few minutes. But first, I want to talk about happiness and why the Cantrell Ladder question might not be a perfect measure of happiness. What is happiness? What is satisfaction? I have no idea. I know, or at least I think I know, what being happy feels like. But it's really hard to pin down a definition. I'm happy when I get a new Patreon subscriber. I was happy when I got married. I'm happy when it's a sunny day. I'm happy when my life is going smoothly. I was happy when I received a nice present for my birthday. All of these things made me happy, but in different ways and to different extents. So, in search of a definition of happiness, I did what all people in the 21st century do. I asked ChatGPT. After all, what understands human happiness better than artificial intelligence? Of course, that was sarcasm. But I did actually ask ChatGPT the question, what is happiness? And told it to give me answers from different perspectives. So here are the results. According to ChatGPT, from a psychological perspective, Happiness can be defined as a subjective emotional state, 
characterised by feelings of joy, contentment and overall well-being. From a hedonistic philosophical perspective, happiness is the pursuit of pleasure and the avoidance of pain. From a utilitarian perspective, happiness is defined as the greatest good for the greatest number of people. From a spiritual perspective, happiness may be seen as a state of inner peace, harmony and spiritual fulfilment. And from a sociological perspective, happiness may be seen as a social construct, influenced by cultural norms, values and social relationships. In other words, there are many different definitions of happiness. When we judge the happiest country in the world, it's difficult to judge across all different perspectives. Different people, different cultures, different societies and different religions all have different ways of seeing happiness and satisfaction. So, what version of happiness does the World Happiness Report and the Cantrell Ladder question test? Well, at the beginning of this episode, I asked you all to rank your lives on a ladder, seeing how close you are to the best possible life or worst possible life. Now, what does this mean to you? When you think about the situation of your life using the metaphor of a ladder, What do you think about? Are you thinking about your family? Are you thinking about your job and finances? Are you thinking about your health and your safety? Are you thinking about hobbies, ambitions and goals? I found a fascinating article from The Conversation about the World Happiness Report and it revealed that the Cantrell Ladder metaphor might be pushing you to think of happiness in a specific way. Let me try to explain. A group of researchers from Sweden, the UK and the USA tested the Cantrell Ladder question in the UK with 1,600 adults. They asked one group the Cantrell Ladder question. They asked another group the same question but replaced the ladder metaphor with a scale metaphor. And they asked other groups similar questions, but replaced the phrase best possible life with happiest life, or most harmonious life. The results were interesting. The group asked to rank their lives and happiness on a ladder tended to view their happiness in terms of wealth and power and thought less of their family, friends and health. The group asked to use the scale metaphor thought more about financial security than they did about being wealthy or successful or rich. The groups asked the questions using phrases like happiest life or most harmonious life thought about topics like relationships, mental health and work-life balance. Therefore, research shows that the question and the Cantrell ladder metaphor used to test world happiness tends to push people into thinking about their life and happiness in terms of financial success and wealth. Think about your answer. Would you rank your life differently if I told you to think about your happiness rather than the best possible life? I know I would. I immediately thought of my financial stresses when ranking myself on the ladder. How about you? The research group also found more interesting results. For example, let me ask you this question. It's similar to the previous question, but slightly different, so let me ask it to you again. Imagine a ladder with steps numbered from 0 at the bottom to 10 at the top. The top of the ladder represents the best possible life for you and the bottom of the ladder represents the worst possible life for you. Which step of the ladder would you like to be at? Where would you want to stand if you could stand anywhere? When I hear this question, I immediately think I want to be an 8 or a 9 on the ladder. 
And I'm sure many of you thought the same. But why? 10 is the best possible life. Why don't we want the best possible life? The researchers found that the majority of people didn't want to be a 10 on the Cantrell ladder, and people typically wanted to be an 8. They suggested that this could be because the ladder metaphor made people think more of power and wealth at the expense of relationships, mental health and work-life balance, and made people want a lower score. They associated the ladder and being at the top of the ladder with not having good relationships, probably because they thought in terms of wealth and power. Now, this obviously has implications for the World Happiness Report, and can make us a little cautious about completely trusting the rankings as an accurate survey of happiness. First, it seems like the Cantrell Ladder pushes people to think about wealth, power and financial success. Interestingly, this doesn't correlate to most people's views of happiness. If I ask you what makes you happy, I'm sure the majority of you would say family, friends, a relaxing walk in the park, reading a good book, achieving your goals or something else. You wouldn't say money directly. Of course, money is important, but it tends to not be the main factor in happiness. One research paper from the Social Science and Medicine Journal, which I'll link in the transcript, suggests that social connections are actually the most important factor in subjective well-being, which is the academic term for happiness. And if you remember, social connections like family and friends were exactly the factors considered less important by people asked the Cantrell Ladder question. Second, people don't want to be a 10 on the scale. While the ranking is 1 to 10, it seems like most people would rather be an 8. This makes Finland's score of 7.741 even more impressive. When we hear Finland is the happiest country in the world, the real meaning is that based on a specific view of happiness, so based on wealth and power, Finnish people rank themselves highly. Finland could also be happy in other ways, but this is not tested by the World Happiness Report and the Cantrell Ladder. If you truly want to know how happy someone is, or how happy a country is, you need to ask, ask them what they define as being happy. We can't assume that everyone's definition is the same. Now, as I promised earlier in this episode, I will end with a short discussion on why Finland is so happy. As we've discussed, Finland's place at the top of the rankings is based on the Cantrell Ladder and a view of happiness that may be more wealth and power focused. So let's think of why Finland is so happy. First, Finland boasts lower income inequality compared to many other countries, with a smaller gap between the highest and lowest paid individuals. Research shows that when income inequality is high, happiness is lower. Second, Finland provides strong social support systems, contributing to a sense of community and well-being. Third, Finland has a high level of freedom and people have control over their own lives. Fourth, Finland has relatively low levels of corruption. And fifth, Finland has publicly funded healthcare, reliable public transport, and efficient social services. Hopefully you can see how these factors allow Finland to consistently be ranked highly in happiness. I actually saw a good quote from someone I can't remember exactly where I saw it though. But basically the quote said that these results don't mean Finland has the happiest people. Instead, Finland probably has the fewest number of unhappy people.
So here is today's final thought. Finland has once again been named the happiest country in the world by the World Happiness Report. This episode has looked beyond the simple results and rankings and tried to talk about a much deeper topic. What is happiness and how can we measure it? The Cantrell Ladder is the way that many surveys, including the World Happiness Report, try to measure life satisfaction and happiness. And it does this. It definitely offers a helpful way to measure how satisfied people feel with their lives. However, it's important to remember that this method might make us focus too much on money and success, and not enough on things like relationships and mental health. While it's interesting to see Finland ranked as the happiest country, we need to see these rankings in the context of the Cantrell Ladder. Finland's high ranking is likely due to factors like fairer income distribution, strong community support and personal freedoms. But happiness is a complex thing, and what makes one person happy might not make another person happy. But what do you think? What makes you happy? What was your answer to the Cantrell Ladder question? Which step of the ladder are you currently on? Actually, at the beginning of this episode, I asked you all this question, and I'm hopefully you all thought of a step. After listening to this episode, has that changed your mind? Because it has for me. When I first read the Cantrell Ladder question, I put myself on a six, right? Sixth step on the ladder. But this was primarily based off my financial stresses and my money worries and anxiety about uh, taxes and pensions and savings, all of these issues that come with being an adult, I guess. But actually, happiness, at least for me, isn't based on money and it never has been based on money. In my personal life, I'm incredibly happy. I'm much happier than a six, at least, anyway. So I think I would rank myself higher now. And I wonder if any of you guys are the same. Now that you've you've heard me explain how the Cantrell Ladder makes you think in terms of power and wealth, would you actually rank yourselves differently if I asked you to rank yourself based on your happiness rather than the quality of your life. I'm really, really interested in all of your answers, so please leave some comments and reach out to me. The best places to comment are Spotify, so leave a comment on Spotify. I pin all comments. Basically, every single person who comments on Spotify will have their comment showed publicly, unless I can't read it, or unless it's rude. Um, You can comment on the Thinking in English blog over on the transcript that's linked in the description. Or if you're a Patreon member, um, message me directly. Comment on Patreon or comment on Discord. Uh, And yeah, join in the conversations with all of our Patreon members. If you're not a Patreon member, the link is in the description. Go over and, and sign up and support Thinking in English. Maybe try and help me take away some of my financial worries and improve my Cantrell Ladder score. Thank you all so much for listening today. This has been one of my favourite episodes to research and write. I think it's been my favourite definitely this year, maybe in in the past six months. It's my favourite one to research and write. So I really hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.